semifinal early county and cartersville dave bobcats hurricanes i think they're fired up i think so jim and you know the one thing about this cartersville football team when we talked in the open about winning breeds winning 16 seniors on this team they've been here before this cartersville senior class 51 and 4 since their time in high school at Cartersville. that's just outstanding there you see both teams taking the field the crowd still coming into the georgia dome big day of football this is just game two of five scheduled today and then we have five more tomorrow so if you love football this is the place to be here on gptv there's the road to the uh to the dome for early county and there you see big win over irwin county and then some pretty close games against fidelia and manchester well they did they put a 49 spot up against irwin county and then uh proceeded to win those uh those next two with uh, 17 points and for cartersville jim and there you see their numbers beating callaway by three and then gac and finally charlton county which is always a tough ball game at one point in that gac game they were down 17 nothing came back with 35 second half points so if they get into a situation like that today there we know it's possible there you see the early county players getting ready for this one coach trey Coach uh, Trey Wolf is down there for for Early County. He's the first year head coach. And kicking off for Early County will be Cole Freeman. And of course, Frank Barton is on the other sidelines heading up Cartersville. Back deep to receive Antoine Sams, number 20, and number eight, Kendale McCaffey. So we're just about ready to go here from under the big top in downtown Atlanta. There's Freeman and we are underway. Short kickoff taken at the 25 yard line by Kendall McAfee. And it'll be first and 10 for Cartersville. A good decision there just to go ahead and pounce on the ball. I was a little surprised at uh, Kind of a short kick there by Early County, but um, that gives Cartersville some pretty good field position at the 25, uh, just outside the 26-yard line. And then we see Lee Miles, who is the leader, no doubt, of this uh, Cartersville team. And as we mentioned in the open, only one interception thrown the entire year. There's the lineup for Cartersville. Sams is at the halfback. Evans, key players, uh, Richie and Callahan, and, of course, Hill. There's your offensive line, Poppin. Poppin and Brock are the leaders, the seniors. First and 10, Cartersville at the 25. This is Miles. And they're going to take him down back at the 21-yard line. Good defense by Early County. He was captured by Leonard Lovett. Here's the defensive lineup for Early County. Naramore, Worlds, Lovett, Scott, and Riley on defense. Deep backs are Wimbush, Williams, George, and Harris. Two Georges back there. Well, Naramore, the uh, number 82, 6'2", 215 pounds senior, 40 tackles of the season and six quarterback sacks. Miles checking off. Calling an audible now. Second and 14. Miles on the keeper and he's done. Xavier Williams, number 28, with the big defensive play on Lee Miles. Well, give, her, give Early County credit. They've gotten to the quarterback, Lee Miles, twice now in the first two uh, first two plays. They're keying in on Miles, that's for sure. Here's the replay. What a play by Xavier Williams. So third and long for Cartersville. They have to get to the 35. They're on the 19. Third and 16 for Cartersville. Miles in the shotgun. Swing pass. And it goes to Evans. And Evans is brought down way short of the first down at the 23. So fourth down out the punt, Dave. Well, Evans is the go-to guy. Rushed for a little over 900 yards. Average yards per carry, 7.4 yards. Carry didn't get that that time, though. Try to set up the screen, but uh, couldn't get it started, and Williams, number 28, makes the big defensive play for Early County. So far, Early County's defense, Jim, very, very impressive. And punting for Cartersville is Scott Sexton. 
Scott is a junior. For the Kings. On Sexton's punt. A good one off to the side. The ball is kicked by Collier Watson and out of bounds. Strange play, Dave. Well, it is, and uh, of course, it's going to be a benefit for Orly County. They're going to end up with some with better field position than they would have ended up with had he been able to feel the football. Just kind of a quirky play there, but for Orly County, a, a big break that's going to give them great field position inside Cartersville territory. And in the game, the quarterback for now, Orly County, is Collier Watson. They'll flip flop back and forth between Watson and Harvin. Here's your uh, offensive lineup. And Caesar, Riley, Kennedy, Watson, and Larimore. Here's your handoff. And off to the left side is Caesar. Brian Caesar, the senior. And check that. Joel Harvin is playing quarterback. Collier Watson in the backfield. Caesar had 69 carries on the season, 734 yards, and scored 12 touchdowns. There's your offensive line. Somerset, Gilbert, Means, Worlds, and Medlin for the Bobcats. Traveled up here from Blakely. Second down for the Bobcat. And the handoff up the middle to Zane Riley. And the big senior moves that ball forward. And it looks like he's got enough for the first down. Well, Riley, the 5'10 senior, had 70 carries on the season. A little over 400 yards. Scored three touchdowns. Straight up the gut. Dave, I think you could have run through that line. Well, I don't know if I'd lowered my shoulder if I'd have had much success as he did on that play. <laughs> First and 10 at the 21 for the Bobcats. There you see the numbers on Zane Riley for the regular season. Harvin, handoff up the middle to Xavier Williams, who is so far the defensive star of the game for the Bobcats. Speaking of defense, here's the lineup for the Carter, uh, for Cartersville. It's Lauderdale, Harris, Winters, Flew Allen, and Matheson. And then in Moore, Richie, Miles, Winters, McAfee, and Brown. One thing about the defense for Cartersville, Jim, they average, well, on offense, they average 35 points a game. They allow just 11 points a game. So this is a very stingy Cartersville defense. Second and eight, the call goes to Xavier Williams, and he's stopped by a bunch of canes. Good job by Early County's defensive line following the football right there at the handoff. And they were just with him step for step. They kind of solidified themselves on the right side there, leaving no opportunity for a hole to be opened and uh, doing a good job shutting them down. That'll leave a third and eight from the 19-yard line for Early County. Joel Harvin calls the play, and the Bobcats go to the line of scrimmage. Just underway, the double-A semifinal from the Georgia Dole. Marvin drops back, rolls left, fires down the field, has a man, and it's tipped and incomplete. The ball was tipped by number eight, Kendall McAfee, and Kenny Brown was also in the area. That'll bring a fourth down. Intended receiver was number 10, Collier Watson. Here it is again, Dave. See, watch this pass. Look at how high it goes. He ends up throwing into double coverage because it hung in the air so long that the other Cartersville uh, defensive back had time to come back. And, and Early County's awfully lucky that they did not get intercepted on that pass. Both McCaffrey and Brown touched that ball. Now Cole Freeman will attempt a 28, make it a 38-yard field goal. And the kick is short and to the right. Actually goes into the books as a 37-yarder. 37-yarder missed. And so the Canes will take over first and 10. Kind of gets a pat on the helmet from his one of the coaches there on the sideline. Awfully tough to come into a facility like the Georgia Dome when you've been playing in high school stadiums and trying to knock down a 37-yard field goal. Came up a little bit short on that one. There you see some of the coaching staff for the Bobcats talking things over first and ten for Cartersville at the 20 Lee Miles your quarterback and the handoff goes to Evans the sophomore uh, check that that's Antoine Sams he's also a sophomore running to the right side of the line that time trying to find any semblance of an opening and for a split second, he had one there. Early County, though, on that line. Great job coming over to seal it off. Here it is again, Dave. Cuts right to the right there. Nice tackle 
there by Early County's number 75 to kind of come over from his position, kind of yes. dove and grabbed him around the lower legs. Leonard Levette with a big defensive play. Second and nine for Cartersville. And a little fumble ruski play here. Look at this. And it's Chris Callahan recovering the fumble in the backfield. Looked like they had a double reverse going, Dave. Double reverse, and it looked like after the first handoff it was going to be successful. And then it broke down on the uh, on the ensuing handoff, the second one, and they're lucky to not turn the football over because right now they're at their own 15-yard line. If Early County's got that ball, they're, they're sitting pretty. Cartersville awfully lucky right now. There you see it. Antoine Sams to uh, Chris Callahan and the fumble. Right in the exchange. Good job by Callahan. Heads up play to get back there and recover. Jump on top of that football. Sets him back, though. Third and 15 now from the 15-yard line for Cartersville. This is Miles. In trouble again, and down he goes. Great play by number 51, Jermaine Mells. Mells is just a sophomore. Boy, Jim, I'll tell you what, awfully impressed so far with the defensive play of Early County. They are giving Cartersville, which is a high-powered offense, absolutely nothing. Here's your replay, and right away, Miles has nowhere to go. Scott Sexton. Back to punt again for Cartersville. You saw that highlight, 75, Leonard Lavette once again getting through the defensive line and forcing the pressure. So on fourth and 19, here's Sexton's punt, second of the day. This one, a good one, takes it back to the 50-yard line. This is Bernard George on the return. He takes it back to about the 46-yard line for Early County will have it. First and ten. Well, once again, uh, their second possession, they come out with some pretty good field position in Cartersville territory, albeit at about the 46 or the 47-yard line. We'll see now what Early County's offense can do. He has a little bit of trouble fielding that punt. But for Early County, luckily, they're able to hold on and uh, get back inside uh, on the other side of the 50-yard line. Bobcats have it. First and ten at the 46-yard line. The swing to Brian Caesar, and Caesar heads to the right sideline, picks up a few yards, might even have a first down here, Dave. Well, from our vantage point, it looks like he does. Looks like they're going to go ahead and move the chains. He had a nice hole on the right side, and Cartersville's D-backs giving chase. And you see another angle. Heads up play there by Caesar to pick up that yardage, and they do pick up the first down. With the ball to 36. First and 10, Bobcats. And the handoff straight up the middle to number 40, Zane Riley. Riley might have picked up one or two yards. Evans is going to get, well, during the season, as I said, he had 69 carries. He had more yardage, but Riley had more carries and less yardage. So they pretty much split it between the two of them. Riley had 70 carries during the regular season. So Raleigh picked up a couple. It's second and eight now for Early County. Joel Harvey. I'll be calling an audible back there. Some of his running backs. Here's Caesar going left side this time and out at the 24-yard line. And a good defensive play by Kenny Brown. There you see Brian Caesar on the year. As I said, 69 carries, 734 yards, an average of over 10 yards to carry 12 touchdowns. Look at the speed he shows as he gets out to the outside part of the field. Cartersville's defender giving chase, able to run him out of bounds, but a nice pickup once again for Early County and their running back, Brian Caesar. Here's your rushing yard so far for the game. Not looking too good for Cartersville, but Early County on the move. Never, uh, uh, it's very surprising right now with Cartersville negative 16. And that's a team that really throughout the year had no trouble moving the ball. First and 10 for the Bobcats on the 24-yard line. Joel Harvin calling the signals. Harvin tosses back. This is Anthony Beecham. And Beecham gets to the 19-yard line. Nice carry by Beecham. First carry for him in the game. It's good to come in and get everybody a quick touch on the football. We've seen Caesar. We've seen Riley. Let's get Beecham in there. And he follows his blocker nicely to the right side of the field, finds the hole, and uh, gets them right down to the 20-yard line. So once again, Early County, excellent field position. Now looking to capitalize at the 20. Second and six. The ball's at the 20-yard line for the Bobcats. Here you see some of the fans that uh, traveled to the game today from Cartersville. Imagine what that line must look like in traffic coming down I-75. 
Here's Harvin. And the handoff to Caesar. He looks like he stopped. Now he is. Finally brought down by number 11, Shannon Winters. First time we've seen that big defensive line for Cartersville flex their muscles a little bit. They broke through the line. They knew the play was coming to Caesar. And they made a nice stop there. You see 75 get right through the line and push him backwards. They stopped his momentum and actually put his momentum heading back back the other direction so a heads up play there for the Purple Hurricanes. So a third and 12 for Early County. Three minutes remaining in a very fast play in the first quarter. Looks like Harvin's going to be in the shotgun here. Harvin looks downfield and is intended for Collier Watson incomplete. Had the right idea, just do it a little bit below the outstretched arms of Watson and into the turf. And there's a flag on the play. And not too sure what the call is yet. Well, it ends up no flag on the play, Dave. So a fourth and 12 from the 26 in Early County that says, hey, we're going to go for this thing. Harvin back to pass, looks downfield, has a man in the corner of the end zone. Incomplete to Collier Watson. A great defensive play by Jason Ritchie. Well, Ritchie having to just, you know, Put his mind in two. Not only does he got to say he's got to stay with the receiver, but at the same time he's got to look back at Harvin just as he releases the football. He's got to be looking up, following the ball, and staying with his receiver. Did a good job with his outstretched arms that time, with his fingertips, just to get in there at the last split second and deflect that ball. Otherwise, Early County's got six. Excellent shots by our technical crew once again. And we've got a great team here here at the Georgia Dome once again for the 2001 semifinals. All right, Cartersville takes over on downs, first and 10 at the 26-yard line. Maybe the best field position they've had so far in this game. Miles hands off to Evans, and he goes nowhere. Good defense by Early County, and again, number 28, Xavier Williams. So Xavier is uh, turning into be the, the early, pardon the pun, defensive player of the game. Well, we knew coming into this game, as with all the games that we'll see on GPTV here from the Georgia Dome, these teams are here for a reason, because they're pretty good football teams, not just offensively, not just defensively, but on both sides of the line. And both of these teams are showing that so far here in the first quarter. Lee Miles, again, this time drops back, looks over the middle, has a man. That's McAfee, and McAfee is gone. Lone coverage somewhere in the secondary by Early County to allow him to get that wide open. We'll see on the replay. There's nobody within 25, 30 feet of him. 73 yards on the touchdown pass from Miles to McAfee. And Cartersville has the lead, 6 0. We'll see on the replay. Miles calmly back in the pocket. Sees the receiver right over the middle. McCaffrey, he's wide open. Look at McCaffrey looking around. He looks to the right, looks to the left. He's got nothing to worry about. There's nobody near him. And it's a quick six for Cartersville. They strike with lightning quickness. I like the way McCaffrey took He never looked back. Never, not once. He was gone. Extra point attempt by Jesus Lamberti. And the kick is blocked. A great block. The defense gets back in the backfield here. Good block by number five, Darius Williams. So the lead remains 6-0 for Cartersville with 1.56 left to go in the first quarter. So far, everything we expected. Good uh, play by both of the defensive lines. Here's another look at the touchdown. Beautiful pass right across the middle. Beautiful spiral. Two-handed catch, as we would expect, and then he's just off to the races there. There's nobody even coming close until the very end right there. You see 21 get right in there but at that point he had the afterburners on and he was in the end zone you bet Cartersville by the way only had 10 men out on the field for the extra point so uh, the flag was uh, the flag was dropped and uh, and then excused because uh, they missed the extra point anyway so. 
far as been blocked. That's right. There's McAfee, the, who was on the receiving end of that 73-yard touchdown. Another great call by Cartersville, Dave. Sure was. And again, it was some sort of breakdown in the secondary there for Early County. Not sure exactly who or why, but for whatever the reason, McCaffrey was just wide open there in the right in the middle of the field and uh, on the receiving end of a beautiful spiral pass. And that was pretty much all she wrote for that one. Cartersville jumps out to the early lead. As we mentioned, we have five games today at GPTV. Earlier today, Buford beat Clinch County 15-7. Coming up next, it's the AAA semifinal. North for side to McGrange. It's a football party under the big top. Sure is. This is some great football. We'll span the crowd here. Good crowds. Must not be too many people in Cartersville or down in Early County today because it looks like most of the town, most of the county is here in the Dome. Kicking off is Jesus Lamberti. And it's fielded by number seven for next Nick George for Early County. And Nick takes it up near the 35-yard line. George actually did make a nice cutback at one point to get across the 30-yard line. Let's see where the officials will spot that football. It's going to be just outside the 35-yard line. So a pretty nice run back considering the style of kick that they had to field. And they've had uh, they had a little bit of trouble with the first two uh, with the first two punts, but that one. They were able to get it back up close to the 35. Joel Harvin brings his team to the line of scrimmage. Down 6-0. Handoff. Left side. This is Caesar. Looking for some open room. Gets to the 41-yard line. Picked up about six following his blocker to the left side of the field. And a stop by Kenny Brown. Gets it right across the 40. Here you see the replay. Takes the handoff. Nice block there by number 54 to help the hole. Here he runs into a little bit of trouble, starts to see two and three purple jerseys, and uh, does a good job just to get across to the 40-yard line. There's your officials. Sorrells is the referee, Ewing the umpire, and you see the rest of the, uh, the officials for today's game. By the way, today's game can also be watched live on the GPTV Internet now, site. We'll have more on that in a moment. On the offense, five-yard penalty, repeat down. As I was saying, you can uh, today's game can be watched live on the GPTV internet site at www.gpb.org. Just follow the links to connect to the game. And beginning Tuesday, you'll be able to watch the game again on the same site. Once again, that's internet site www.gpb.org. First and 15 for early 40. And straight up the gut is Xavier Williams. And a good defensive play by Kenny Brown. Otherwise, Williams is gone, Dave. Well, he is, and a good job uh, showing the speed there by Cartersville's defensive backs, able to catch up with him. But once again, you look at the two, the four running backs for Early County, all seniors. Look at him find the hole right there, turns on the speed. Look at those legs just churning it out. He splits the two D-backs right there, number two and number eight, and finally they're able to get him down. And uh, what a great run there by Xavier Williams, the senior. 35-yard run by Williams. It's first and 10 for Early County. Excuse me, by Caesar. Here we go. Uh, on the play, it's Xavier Williams again. Nice little draw play that time to Xavier Williams. And he's able to pick up a few. They've got it at about the 32. Xavier Williams this year, 51 rushes, 51 carries, I should say, 441 yards. Also good yards per carry average at just over eight, scored seven touchdowns. So along with Caesar, Riley, and Williams, they've done a good job spreading the running duties on early counties uh, in their backfield. On second and six, this is Williams again. And a flag on the play. I got a feeling this might be coming back, Dave. Uh, you are correct. The early County is able to peel off some nice runs here, but a couple of penalties have kind of hurt this offensive possession. They had that five-yard penalty just a few moments ago that turned to six-yard advance, along with a five-yard penalty. Kind of brought them back a little. We have a chop block on the offense. Be 15 yards from the point of the five. 
Let's go downstairs to Anthony White. Anthony. Well, Jim, you was talking about the crowd here for Cartersville. I talked to a few fans. They said middle schools are closed down, elementary schools. They sold 1,500 tickets at the school and sold out, so they had to come down here and buy some from the Dome. So believe me, the whole Cartersville town is here. So I guess it's a holiday up there in Cartersville. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, here's Caesar running right side, looking for an opening, and finally goes out of bounds around the 43-yard line. Just a tough situation there for Caesar, because you're in your running back, obviously, you want to be heading north. You want to be running north-south. He got caught in a situation that time where he could only go east-west because the Cartersville defensive line was just staying with him step for step, finally forcing him out of bounds over in front of the early county bench. McAfee and Brown were there to uh, take care of Caesar and knock him out of bounds. Third and 18 now for the Bobcats. Jim, normally in the state of Georgia, the only time they shut down the towns and shut down all the schools, when we have a snowstorm or an ice storm. <laughs> and high school championship <laughs> and a, football. And high school football, that's right. <laughs> this should be the last play of the first quarter with eight seconds to go, and there you see the clock counting down. They might not even play this one. Well, here he goes, there's Harvin. Drops back, looks downfield, has a man, and broken up by... But he was looking for Bernard George, and it was broken up by Kenny Brown. And we still got two seconds left on the clock. Good play by Brown. Well, it was a nice pass over the middle. And uh, almost a nice catch there by Bernard George, the junior. Released that just as he got hit. Timed his jump perfectly, just could not grab. South on 75 for the big game here at the Dome. Dave Cohen. Been an interesting ball game so far. Been very interesting. Uh, great job by the two defenses. Here are the yards so far today. Early County, 75 yards, but they've yet to score. They had the possession of the football seven, a uh, little over seven minutes. Cartersville, 65 yards. They've got the one touchdown. They had the ball for just over four minutes. And a first and ten now for Cartersville on their own 24-yard line. Miles drops back to pass, looks downfield, has a man incomplete to Kenny Brown. Had the right idea, just over, overthrew his receiver a little bit. Good job defensively there by uh, number seven for Early County. That's Nick George. Nick George staying right with the receiver. Pretty nice pass, but just a little bit too high by about a half a foot. And I think even if he'd caught the football, he would have come down and probably hit the turf. I don't think he would have been able to pick up any more yardage, but just over, overthrew him just a little bit. I'll tell you what, Mr. Miles has an arm, doesn't he? Sure does. Didn't he feel that last punt at the end of, end of the first? Sure did. Game? The guy does everything. Oh, yeah, yeah. Here's Miles on second down on the keeper. And he's close to a first down. Nice heads up run just short of the first down marker, which is right at the 35-yard line. Did a good job again following his blockers. There you see 33 gets right in behind him. Nice block right there. Took out a couple of the white jerseys. Jermaine Mills was one of the guys on the tackle for Early County. So you got a third and short. Third and one from the 33-yard line for the Bobcats. Uh, excuse me for the Canes. And on the keeper, this is Miles. Nice move to get out get out of the uh, hands of Williams and then he gets the first down you talk about making something out of nothing he did at that time because he almost got sacked for a loss that time the defender the defensive player had him by the foot he just pulled the foot away from him there you see 28's got him wrapped up he's got that right leg he just pulls away and uh, heads back upfield picked up about four or five yards from that play here we see another low angle right here and a nice nice run there by Miles after almost getting the sack a great second effort by Lee Miles. Cartersville offensively, the touchdown catch, of course, 73 yards. They've run nine other plays. They're minus seven in yardage. Here's Miles looking to improve on those numbers right now. Picked up about three or four on that carry. And they say these footballs, uh, football games uh, can be funny games sometimes, and the statistics don't always tell the story of the game. Miles, 154 carries this season, a little over 1,400 yards, and then a, a great yards per carry average at just over nine, and he scored 21 touchdowns this year on the ground. And now Miles looks for a timeout. 
Well, doesn't that gets it. doesn't that sign pretty much tell the story of Cartersville? To say the least, Cartersville six nothing right now over Early County. I'll tell you what, while we got time here, Dave, uh, let's take a quick look back in time at one of our semi-final flashbacks. Nineteen ninety-nine single A semifinal, Charlton County versus Miller County. Led by sophomore tailback Lamar Williams, the Indians scored 21 third quarter points and grew to a 35-19 win over the Pirates. Nice to turn the clock back a little bit. I'll tell you, those Indians are always tough to deal with. Well, they are. You know, sometimes you're up here in the booth, you do these games year after year, you forget what great football you see here in the Dome with some of the better football teams in the state of Georgia. And uh, flashbacks, great idea. Always good to look back and see some of the great teams from the past few years. I'll tell you what, this, this sport of football, you, you have to have the support. You do from the, from the entire school, from the band to the cheerleaders to the fans. Here we are live at the Georgia Dome, the double-A semifinal. Game two of five, live here on GPTV. So uh, sit back, relax, and enjoy plenty of football action on GPTV. This is Miles, straight up the middle. Maybe picked up a yard or so. Early County coming out on that 4-3 defensive front. And those uh, four front linemen for Early County so far have done a pretty good job against this Cartersville team. Again, the touchdown that they've given up was a breakdown in the secondary. But so far along the lines on both sides of the ball, both teams have been very, very impressive. Third down and one. Keep play here, Dave. Got the dual backs. Miles hands off to Caesar, and Caesar looks like he has the first down. Brought down by about or, or check that it was Evans on the handoff brought down by about five guys here, here it is again to Evans and once again early County getting in behind the line didn't see his number but just getting wrapped up by white jerseys he picks up the first down and just about midfield so it'll be first and ten at the 48 for Cartersville Big handoff, and now on the keeper. And a good defensive play by Ronaldo Wimbush, number 42 for Early County. Now they say they fumble the ball, and Williams has the ball for Early County. Well, a big turnover right now for Cartersville. Early County once again, I think for the third time in this game, going to find themselves with pretty good field position. They'll have it right at midfield. And we see the replay. Miles running into some white jerseys, stripped from behind. Hard to catch that number of who reached in and knocked it out. Looked like number 40, Zane Riley, with the strip. And Williams and Harris were on top of it. Sean Harris made the recovery. So Cartersville with their first turnover of the game. And Early County with some great field position. First and 10 from the 49. And the pass is incomplete. Harvin to Kevin Naramore. Naramore had it in his hands and then let it slip away, Dave. Ran right into three purple jerseys. Otherwise, it would have been a nice catch. There you see, beautifully thrown pass. Nice catch. And then it was a, a, actually a good job there by one of the defensive backs, number two That's for Kenny Brown. Kenny Brown reaching in and slapping that ball away and breaking it up. Good job by uh, Cartersville's backfield on that play. So a second attempt for Harvin. And the Bobcats. And the handoff up the middle. And this is Williams. Look at Williams go. He could be gone, Dave. Williams at the 10, the 5, and a touchdown. I tell you what, he might be the fastest guy out on the field for Early County. We saw him with a 35-yard run right there near the end of the first quarter. And he comes out, and now Early County has tied the game at 6. A 51-yard touchdown run by Xavier Williams. That's his eighth, eighth touchdown of the season for Williams. Cole Freeman will now come on to attempt the extra point for the Bobcats, and this is for the lead. And 
Freeman's kick is good, and Early County has taken the lead at 8 minutes and 36 seconds to go here in the second quarter. Well, Jim, one thing that we've seen on both of our touchdowns, impressive running by the backs for both Early County and Cartersville. You see the replay on this one. Williams, look at him right there. Busts through a couple of purple jerseys. Avoids 42 right there. Avoids number two, Kenny Brown. And there he is off to the end zone. And neither uh, of those Cartersville defensive backs are going to be able to catch up with Williams. He just has incredible speed. And we see it from another angle. Did a good job avoiding those Cartersville tacklers that time. Kept it towards the middle part of the field. And that one tied the game at six. Got to get a little bit of oxygen after tearing up 53 yards of turf here at the Georgia Dome. And that's exactly what he gets, and that's not bad numbers on the day so far. Not at all. Five carries, just under 100 yards. Look at the average of yards per carry. 18.6, and he does have the one touchdown that he just scored. So Xavier Williams, some big defensive plays in the early going, and now comes up with the big offensive play for the Bobcats and early county takes their first lead of the game. 7-6 early county. I was going to say, you talk about never being able to underestimate the importance of your seniors. And there you see Xavier Williams, a senior, along with Zane Riley, Brian Caesar, and uh, one of the others that we haven't seen, uh, Davon George. Cole Freeman to kick off for early county. And back to take a deep for Cartersville is Antoine Sands, the sophomore. Sands to the 30. And finally stopped at the 32-yard line. So the sophomore, Antoine Sams, getting a quick touch on the football. Sams stopped by Nick George and Kevin Naramore. So it'll be first and 10 for Cartersville at their own 32-yard line. Pretty sure Antoine Sams' sister, Autumn, played basketball at Clemson. She's now an assistant basketball coach at Georgia State, where I also work. And their, uh, their older brother is uh, a freshman at Florida State. Wow. So this is a very athletic, very, very, very good athletic group of kids they've got. First and ten for Cornersville. Lee Miles. Might be calling it audible up there at the line of scrimmage. Miles. Have a handoff. Takes the handoff and follows his running back and maybe picks up a yard or two. It'll be a second and nine, Dave. And we'll see what Cartersville's able to come up with here as they trail it by one. Clock continues to run here in the second quarter. We'll see what Miles can pull out of his hat. Again, he's been working on both sides of the football today, fielding punts, throwing, running, and doing it all. Miles on second and eight. Now we got a whistle. And we have a whistle. And there's a flag, and this one's going to go against Cartersville. Delay a game. Of course, coming up after this one, it's the 3A semifinal. And that ball, delay a game against the offense. Still be second down. The Raiders of North Forsyth against the Grangers from the Grange. And you'll be calling that game, too. You've Going to have back-to-back -back exciting football games. Here you see the 4A, too, coming and up a little later Charles on. Ward and uh, Gerald... Gerald Riggs is going to call the uh, Statesboro Troop game coming up uh, later on. And then Valdosta Parkview at 9 o'clock tonight. That should be a game. It'll be good to see Gerald Riggs, too, former Atlanta Falcon and Washington Riggs. And there's a fumble on the play. Early County is saying they have it. They do. Early County takes advantage of another turnover. Leonard Lavette comes up with the play. Miles and Evans, a fumble on the exchange. There it is right there. Evans actually had it in his hands. And the Bobcats make a big play on D. There you see 75. We talked about Leonard Lavette. He's just huge across that defensive line. And Cartersville's second turnover of the game going to put Early County in some great field position. Third or fourth time they've had outstanding field position. They've got it right inside the 30-yard line. First and 10 on the 29. A little free flicker play. And incomplete. Brian Caesar tried to find Collier Watson. And incomplete on first and 10. 
I'll tell you what, the, as high as that pass went from Caesar, it's very Willie Mays-ish, if you remember that famous catch, almost having to look up straight over his, uh, his shoulder to catch that thing. Here we see in the replay, he's just having to look up and follow that thing. It's almost looking straight back up at a 45-degree angle, just could not get there quick enough to make the catch. So second and 10 for Early County on the 29. This is Harvey. And the handoff up the middle to Riley. And he picks up a few. Early County just continuing to pound it into the off to the defensive line for Cartersville with Caesar and Zane Riley. And again, I'm expecting that they'll mix it up a little bit as they go with the power of Caesar and Riley. And then all of a sudden they throw Xavier Williams at you, and that speed just throws them off kilter a little. Let's go downstairs to Anthony White. Anthony? Jim, you talk about, I talked to Coach Barton earlier before the game, and he was talking about the teams that make the less mistakes in this game will win it. And as you see, Cartersville is making those mistakes. Back upstairs. They sure are hurting where they're going. Here's Harvard. Back to pass, looks right side, has a man. That is Naramore. And Naramore staying on his feet. And is finally forced out of bounds near the 12 yard line. Again, Naramore was wide open, made a nice catch on the uh, on the pass from Harvin that time, and then did a good job with the second effort. There you see 10 catches of the season for Naramore, 168 yards, an average of almost 17 yards per carry. There you see Harvin back at plenty of time, spots his receiver, hits Naramore, and Naramore does a good job heading towards the outside part of the field on the right side. Nice hit there. Lowered the shoulder a little bit, then stays inbound, trying to pick up another foot if he can before he gets knocked out of bounds. So a first and 10 for Early County on the 12-yard line. Harvin calling the singles at the line of scrimmage. Harvin, hands off. This is Williams. And brought down by a number of canes. Number 95 is Orlandis Lauderdale. And I thought they might throw Williams in there just to mix it up, up a little bit along with uh, what we see from Caesar and Riley. Of course, Riley's a big power back there, big fullback. Caesar, kind of the middle guy there. He's more of the running back stature, but then you bring in a guy like Xavier Williams, kind of that scat back. We saw his speed on the touchdown that he scored that 53-yard run. And uh, today averaging 16, just over 16 yards a carry. That's double what he did during the regular season. So he's having an outstanding day today so far for early County. Both on offense and defense. Second down and nine up at the 11-yard line. Fake handoff and a pass over the middle. Intercepted by Kenny Brown. So the Bobcats turn it over for the first time today. Well, a big missed opportunity for early County, but good pressure on the quarterback that time by the purple jerseys along the front line for Cartersville. Harvin, a mistake throwing the ball at all. Probably should have taken the sack, but he, he threw it into coverage. Kenny Brown right there all by himself, able to time it and make the, make the interception. And that's big for Cartersville because if they find them, if, if they were to have found themselves down 14-6, they could have been in a little bit of trouble. Early County's done a good job this afternoon of ball control. Five and a half to go. Here in the second quarter, and Cartersville starts it out first and ten on their own four-yard line. This is Chris Callahan, and Callahan takes it out to near the ten-yard line. Pick up a seven will be second and three. I think the first time we've seen Callahan's number called this afternoon, if not the first and just the second. And he gets a nice little pickup right there, picks up about five or six yards in that run. Again, good job recognizing the hole, followed his blocker and then ran into two white jerseys before being taken down to the turf. So he picks up six. It'll be second and four for the Canes at the 10-yard line. Miles, your quarterback, and the handoff to Antoine Sams, and Sams comes up with a big play. Sams gets to the 25-yard line, finally brought down by Sean Harris, number 29. Nice job by the two backs in these last two carries by Cartersville because the turnover, although it was great for Cartersville to get that turnover, of course, they didn't have a lot of room to operate being so far back in their own end. Well, the back-to-back -back carries there have now pushed them out there just outside the 25-yard line. Here you see the run by Sams. Good job 
getting it out that uh, you know showing some of that quickness and giving uh, Miles now in the Cartersville offense some opportunity to work. And now the handoff to number three Chris Callahan and Cal Callahan works his way right side stopped by Ronaldo Wimbush and Sean Harris. Kind of stuffed the run a little bit that time again running east west tried to turn it up and the white jerseys just followed him beautifully and ran him into the turf. That's the whole secret. You turn that corner and you have a chance. They did a good job that time denying him the corner. Second and seven from the 28. Lee Miles at quarterback for the Kings. And a handoff up the middle. That's Devin Evans. And the sophomore maybe picks up about four or five yards. Stopped by number 41, Octavius Balkum. They're about two or three yards short of the first down. Good job, though, by Miles. Miles, of course, can run the option because he's got Sams and Evans back there, or he can just keep it himself. Actually, we're looking at a third and one now. Third and one for Cartersville. Big play of the game right here as they look to take over the momentum. Handoff up the middle. This is Evans. And Evans has a first down, but there's a flag on the play. Well, nice run to barrel right up the middle. Get in behind the big purple jersey front line and get that first down. We'll see what the flag is, whether or not it's going to be positive or negative for the Cartersville Purple Hurricanes. Well, this one's going to go against the Canes. Frank Barden and his coaching staff looking on. We have chop blocking against the offense. 15-yard penalty, repeat third down. Second time we've had a chop blocking penalty in this game in this first half. Here's the play again. Nice handoff, just goes right up the middle, avoids a couple of hits. Once he knew he had the first down, a little uh, level of being comfortable, and then could find his way to try to pick up as much more as he could, but of course the penalty negates all that. Now they're in the hole. Third and 16 from their own 19-yard line. Here's Miles. Top. Looking for a receiver, has nobody. Levet had him by the ankles and brought him down. He was fighting to get back to cross the 20-yard line. Good job by the early county defenders getting in there, shutting Miles down because, as you know, we talked about in the open, Miles is extremely dangerous because he's so good carrying the football himself. Can really make something out of nothing, and uh, he, he tried that time but was unsuccessful. Don't forget, viewers, you can become a Georgia Public Television member today just by visiting our website at www.gpb.org. It's totally secure, simply to use, and takes just two minutes of your time. That's www.gpb.org. Thank you for all your support of GPTV. There you see some of the fans that made their way downtown to the Georgia Dome for the AA semifinal between Cartersville and there's some really county fans. Could, Maybe some future players. Could very well be. Good to see them all out here today supporting their football teams. Again, both teams coming in at 12 and 1. So those fans have had a lot to cheer about all season. More than likely looking forward to getting to the dome. Back in front for the Kings is Scott Sexton. And back to receive for Early County is Darius Williams and Bernard George. Good kick by Sexton. Taken back by Bernard George at his own 35. George up the middle, has some room to the 40. 35 and is brought down. There's a flag on the play. I guess that that penalty is going to go against Early County. With a nice run back there by George. Got an illegal blocker flipping penalty. So they'll bring this one back. Huge missed opportunity for Early County, though, with just over two minutes to go here in the quarter. We have flipping on the run back. Be 15 yards from the point of the foul. 
Here's the play again. And there's the uh, hit in the back right there. Couldn't quite catch that number. Well, that's really going to set him back, though. The official will spot the ball at the 35. So a big turn of events there on that flag, and it'll be first and 10 for Early County. That's a huge penalty for Early County because, once again, they would have had, after that run by George, they would once again have had very, very nice field position. Plays like that to get close to Gray here. First and 10 for the Bobcats on the 35-yard line. So hard and hands off. This is Caesar. Brian Caesar trying to escape some tackles. Gets to maybe the 35-yard line. Brought down by Orlandis Lauderdale, number 95. I think it was Lauderdale. Not sure. We'll hopefully see in the replay. Somebody grabbed Caesar's jersey and held on for dear life. And that was really what brought about that uh, what brought about that tackle. There you see somebody's got the jersey and it looked like it was number 95 maybe. Yeah, that's Lauderdale. And then Luke Brew, uh, Bunce uh, helped out to bring him down. See Caesar averaging just over 10 yards a carry during the regular season today. Just under four so far here in the first half. Second down and nine at the 36th yard line. That's Joel Harvin, and now we have a, a whistle downstairs. Well, the one official down here below us threw his flag. Then, uh, Delay our game, this offense, five yard penalty. Now they're back at about the 30, 31 yard line. Trey Walsh walked about three miles on the sidelines <laughs> already. Penalties have killed Early County on this possession. So here on second and 14, this is Harvin trying to set up the screen, gets it to Caesar. And Caesar is stopped. He basically got back to the line of scrimmage. Just uh, beyond the 31 yard line. Caesar was stopped by Ben Matheson. And now it looks like Cartersville is calling the timeout. I was going to say good pressure from the Cartersville defensive line. Harvin was in the shotgun to begin with, and by the time he kept running backwards and threw the pass to Caesar, they had to fight just to get back to the 30-31 uh, yard line. So, Dave, it looks like with a minute eight to go, maybe the Canes are hoping to, uh, to get the ball back. Then we'll see what get, get the locker room. then we'll see what Miles can do under pressure. A lot of times quarterbacks perform at their best when they're in those pressure situations. Final minute, minute and a half before the two teams head to the locker room before halftime. Depending on what happens here, they could end up with some nice field position, too. What do you think some of these coaches are saying downstairs? Well, obviously they're going to tell them, hold on to the football. We cannot afford a turnover at all at this point late in the first half. We've seen a couple of turnovers already for Cartersville. Early County's taken advantage of one of them. And, uh, you know, you don't want to do anything you put yourself in a hole as you head to the locker room. You want to try to go to the locker room with as much momentum as you can, be it on the defensive side of the ball if you're able to make the big stop on the offensive side if you're able to put points on the board. All right, a big third and 14. Cartersville hoping to hold him so we can get the ball back. This is Joel Harvin from his own 31-yard line. Harvin drops back, looks over the middle, intercepted by Ben Matheson. So Early County turns it over for the second time today. Well, what did we just say? You just asked me that question. What are the coaches thinking down there? Do not turn the football over. And he throws right in the middle. Matheson, the junior linebacker, cuts right in the middle. Eyes the football coming out of Harvin's hands. And made a beautiful catch on the interception. And now, as we were talking about, Cartersville's got great field position. They've still got plenty of time. We're right at one minute to go, and they've got it at the 36-yard line. Here's Harvin again, going to release. He's looking for Collier Watson, number 10. Watson a couple of feet behind Matheson, and Matheson makes a nice interception. On first and 10, Miles looks to the air and has a man. Complete to Kenny Brown, and Brown is out at the 10-yard line. Jim, everything we talked about here in the last 30 seconds is coming to fruition. It's coming to fruition for the Purple Hurricanes. Great play from Miles 
to Brown, stopped by Xavier Williams. Here it is again, Dave. Nice pass, looking to the corner. He's got a wide, he's got a receiver wide open, bobbled the ball just a little bit, but held on. Beautiful, good, good concentration there by the receiver. Kenny Brown, his fourth catch of the day, 101 yards. So for the season, he's got four catches, a little over 100 yards, an average of 25 yards per carry, and he had the one touchdown during the regular season. But that was a big catch for where we are right now with 53 seconds to play in the half. First and goal for the Canes at the nine-yard line. And the handoff up the middle. Actually, Miles kept kept the ball and moved it forward maybe a yard. They spotted at the nine-yard line. Here it is again. Miles fakes that handoff, pulls the ball back in. And then tries to find a little bit of an opening. He's not able to find one, and so they'll work it from the nine. Good play by Marcus Worlds, number 55, on second and goal. Miles rolls right, looks for a receiver, now keeps the ball. And is knocked out of bounds at the four-yard line. The stop by Ronaldo Wimbush, number 42. Good job of pursuit by the early county defenders. The clock, the clock kept running. They're probably going to have to put... Five seconds or so back on the clock. When I looked at it, it was about 15 seconds. Right now they've got it at nine, but they ran him out of bounds. Miles had absolutely nobody open in the end zone, though, so a good job by him not to take a chance. He held onto it and uh, got run out. Looks like they'll spot it at the five. There's there's a story story on the uh, early county offense for the day. Two punts, two interceptions, and a missed field goal. Yet you look at the scoreboard right now, and they're leading it by one. Of course, Cartersville's threatening right now, but to be leading by one, probably a pretty good situation for Early County heading into the locker room at halftime. Here you see Lee Miles on the sidelines. Got a lot of stars in that helmet, which means he's done a lot of good things while he's been in Cartersville. So Jesus Lamberti comes out on the field and will attempt a 22-yard field goal for the Canes. So the Canes will try to get on the board one more time before they head into the locker room. Hopefully with a 9-7 lead is what they're thinking. Here's Lamberti. Snap is good, the hole is good. Lamberti's kick is up, and it's good. So Lamberti connects from 22 yards, and Cartersville takes the lead. 9 to 7 with just 5 seconds to go here in the second quarter. Well, they don't get the 7 or they don't get the 6, but they took advantage of the turnover and now more than likely they're going to head into the locker room with their first lead of the game at 9-7. Now, what does that do with momentum? Does that uh, help Cartersville for the second half? Uh, I would say so at this point, definitely, because, uh, you know, as we said, not only did their offense come out and put the points on the board, but defensively they came out and made a nice stop when Early County was threatening, trying to move the ball downfield. Matheson made that interception. And then, of course, they had the uh, pass to Kenny Brown. He did a good job concentration-wise holding onto the ball for that split second that he bobbled it and uh, put them in great position. And they weren't able to punch it in the end zone, but again, at least they come away with three points. They also go in the locker room with the lead for the first time today. So they've got to be feeling pretty good about themselves. We don't know what kind of jitters these teams have. We talked about Cartersville having been here before, but still, you're playing you're playing in the semifinals for the shot to play for the championship. You know, it's a big game for all these kids. Jesus Lamberti getting ready to tee it up for the Canes. But you talk about momentum. Early County's done a pretty good job defensively so far. And there's the pick by Lamberti. And taken by number seven, Nick George. First and ten for Early County. One play. They're going to try and put it up top. Well, I see no reason why not, unless they just decide to go ahead and cash in and head to the locker room down by two. Don't want to risk, you don't want to risk another turnover. Why not air it out, though? Defensive penalty, and they, they're yep. still alive, right? Yep. Let's see what kind of an arm Harvin has here for the final two seconds. So Joel Harvin on the final play of the possible final play of the first half. Hand off to Caesar. Caesar's got some room to work. 45-50, 45, and out of bounds at the 42-yard line. 
and that ends our first half. So they don't air it out, but they give it to Caesar on the hopes that he can get to the left side of the field out in the corner and make something happen. Had a nice run, but nearly, you know, not nearly enough. So an interesting first half. Cartersville has the lead 9-7 over Early County. Quick thoughts on the first half from you, Dave. Well, I thought it was a very good first half, more so from the defensive side of the football. Uh, both teams, both off, both off, the defensive lines, I thought, did a really good job shutting down the run, save for a couple of runs there by Xavier Williams that we saw. But, uh, you know, field uh, turnover is really the story of that first half, I thought. Let's go downstairs to Anthony White. Okay, Coach, you seem to, your team seemed to struggle in the first half. What went wrong? Well, I mean, you know, they're doing a good job defensively. They, they you know... Our offense is built around our quarterback, and, and man, they're just swamping the line of scrimmage. They got everybody up there, and we have to take shots in, at the, you know, the middle of the field and deep when we can, and, and when the, you know, when the opportunity arises. And uh, you know, other than that, the guy give them a lot of credit. They're, they're swamping the line of scrimmage, and they're playing great defense. Okay, what are you going to do in the second half to uh, help get Miles free? Well, I mean, we got to go back and do some things. There toward the end of the half, we ran a little bit of wing tee and, and took the ball away from the option a little bit. We got to mix that up and, uh, you know, then come back with our four wides a little bit. And if they're going to play man to man, we got to take our shots when we can. Okay, good luck in the second half, Coach. Some sort of injury sustained in that first half. Find out, but he's got the, obviously got the helmet off, got the pads off, and he's going to be a spectator here for the second, uh, the third, fourth quarter. That's got to be tough as a uh, high school senior playing and what could be your last game here at the Georgia Dome and then not being able to play in the second half. Sure is. They look forward all year of getting to this point. And now they're here. So Jesus Lamberti to kick it off for Cartersville as we begin the second half at the Georgia Dome. The 2A semifinal. And Lamberti's kickoff goes down to the 10-yard line. That is Bernard George on the return. George has some daylight. Now finally brought down near the 30-yard line. Well, a good run back there by George again. Good job following his blockers after receiving the kickoff. And he's able to get it up just past the 30-yard line. The official is going to spot it at the 31. So that, that again gives them pretty good field position here to start the third quarter. So it'll be first and, ten, first and ten for Early County. They trail in this one nine to seven. Joel Harvin is the quarterback for the Bobcats. There's your stats uh, on the season for Early County and how many rushing yards they have today, which is 160 yards. And on the handoff, it's Zane Riley. And they may be picked up a couple on that one. Looks like they're gonna spot it just outside the 33 yard line. So Riley picks up a couple and they're stopped by Luke Bunce. Brings number up, 75 of Cartersville. Bring up second and eight. Second and nine. So second and nine at their own 32-yard line for Early County. Just underway second half. There you see the clock, upper right-hand corner. A little over 11 minutes to go here in the third quarter. This is Riley again. And Riley brought down by a host of tacklers from from the Canes, including Luke Bunce and Orlandis Lauderdale, number 95. And number 40 there, Zan Riley, the carrier that time. Huge guy, he's a big senior. Got that big pad right up there around his neck. There you see him, and he's just, he's all business when they hand off that football. Lowers that shoulder and just plows through as far as he can go. Four carries today, 21 yards, just over five yards a carry, so that's not bad for the senior. I'll tell you what, I'll just hand him the ball all day long, right? Five yards here, five yards there. Quick first downs, Helvin, and the handoff to Riley again, and he looked for the first down. Looks like they got it. And looks like he does have it. He's a big boy. Luke Bunce made the stop. So first and ten for Early County. We'll call it the 42-yard line. Here's Harvin. And the handoff to Brian Caesar. And Caesar breaks it up the right side. Caesar 30, 20, 10. First touchdown, Caesar. Brian Caesar, a 58-yard run from scrimmage. And Early County has the lead. 
What can you say, Jim? Good job following your blocker right side of the field. Saw the opening. Not the fastest guy out there, but there you see, takes the handoff. Nice block by 54, opens up a hole. There's a straight shot right there. And once he gets to the 40-yard line, there you see number two, Brown, giving chase. But by that time, he's about 10 yards behind him. And it was a closed book on that one. So the 58-yard touchdown run for Caesar. Early County now back on top. Cole Freeman on to attempt the extra point for the Bobcats. The kick is up, and it's good. Freeman gives Early County a 14-9 lead over Cartersville. There you see Brian Caesar, his 13th rushing touchdown of the season. Well, an impressive run, and a good job by him, again, to follow his blockers, look upfield, look for the holes, use the anticipation, Harvin with the handoff. Here's a great low angle shot of it right here. Caesar just breaks it open right there. Nice block by 52 for Early County on Kenny Brown, which opened up the final hole that Caesar needed in order to break free. So a nice run there by 33, Brian Caesar, six foot senior running back. And again, his 13th rushing touchdown of the season. He had two receiving touchdowns during the year, so 15 touchdowns of the year for Mr. Caesar. So Early County back on top with 10 minutes and six seconds to go here in the third quarter. 14-9 Bobcats. What that, it, that trip from Blakely has been worth it so far. And what did Coach Harden tell Anthony at halftime? They're throwing everybody up on the box, throwing everybody up on the line that time. They threw everybody up on the line, opened up just enough holes, and Caesar was quick enough to recognize it, and he ends up 58 yards later in the end zone. So Cole Freeman will kick it off for Early County. And here's the kick, and it goes downfield. This is McAfee, finally fields it at the 10. Is at the 20, McAfee at the 25, 30, 35, 40. McAfee on the run, 40. 30-yard line and finally knocked down at the 28-yard line and brought down by the kicker, Cole Freeman. Also, you got to keep an eye on 82. Narrowmore, the senior, did a good job turning on the speed there, getting over to the sideline and running him out of bounds. Otherwise, he'd have been all the way in the end zone for another touchdown. Here you see the replay. He kind of catches himself in momentum going the opposite direction, fields the football, heads back upfield, Good field vision, heads to the right side of the field. He's got really just one guy to beat. There you see number 82, Naramore. Naramore helping to knock him out of bounds. And almost a breakaway touchdown there for Cartersville. So a 62-yard return, and here come the Canes. And that's Evans. Evans busting his way up the middle and gets a first down for Cartersville. Jim, back-to-back -back impressive runs by the Cartersville Purple Hurricanes right now, and they were deep in their own end when they fielded that punt. Now look at them, they're at the 11-yard line, so huge chunks of real estate are being eaten up by the Purple Hurricanes right now. Here's another look at the run by Evans. Jumps right over his own teammate, and then runs right into a bunch of white jerseys, does a good job spinning, and doing his best to get away, and finally gets brought down at the 11-yard line. So a first and 10 at the 11-yard line, and the handoff goes to Sam. And it looks like we have a flag on the play as Sam is finally brought out of bounds. Knocked out by Octavius Balcom. But we have a flag on the play. Usually on something like this, it's an offensive holding, but we'll have to see what the call is. I think you were right. It's going to be against Cartersville. You can tell, though, uh, the momentum. Even though Cartersville trails right now, they've really uh, have got some movement here in the second half. There you see uh, Kendall McAfee, 57-yard kickoff return. That's the best on the season for McAfee. That holding on the offense, 10-yard penalty from the previous spot, be first down. You were right, a holding penalty going to knock him back 10 yards. Talked about McAfee with his season's best. What better a time to raise the bar than here in the Georgia Dome in the semifinals. Absolutely. So Cartersville will now have a first and 20 
at the 21 yard line. 9.18 to go here in the third quarter. As the Canes look to uh, come back and take the lead over Early County. And now we have a whistle downstairs and a stoppage of play. And looks like a timeout for the Bobcats. So they want them to think about it this early, huh? You know, you're at a juncture in the game. You still got a lot of time to go. 9-16 to play in the third quarter, but it's been a fairly close game, and you don't want to make any mistakes. You want to make sure that all 11 kids on the field know exactly what the play is. Because now you've got an opportunity. You're down by a 14-9 score. This is huge. Now 20-plus yard plays here. Early County with four of them today. Carnesville with three. So that's fairly uh, fairly even between the two schools. So both teams relying on the big play in a big ball game like this. Well, and they'll tell you all the time in football, coaches say we cannot give up the big play. That's all we've seen today here with, uh, with the way the touchdowns have been scored. They've pretty much all been on big plays and big runs. So both teams come back out on the field. It'll be a first and 20 for Cartersville at the 21 yard line. Gonna work out of the shotgun this time. Miles drops back and has a receiver. That is Jason Ritchie and Ritchie is finally brought down near the five yard line by Leonard Levac. Here's big number 75 again, Leonard Levette making the stop. Otherwise, it's six points on the board for Cartersville. And here's the replay. I'll tell you what, Miles drops back pretty deep here. He sure does, but good, good uh, vision downfield. Spots his receiver. And almost six for Cartersville before he's brought down. They'll spot it, looks like, at the six. Well, that for Early County is all over this field today. Another big catch for Jason Ritchie. 21 catches in the regular season, 483 yards, an average of 23 yards a catch, and he had six touchdowns throughout the year. Second and five for the Canes, and the handoff to Evans, and Evans is stopped by Williams and Levatt. There's that big number 75 again, along with uh, number 82. Narramore. For uh, Early County, Kevin Narramore. You know, both of those guys, 82, Narramore, and Levette, 75, just have a knack for being where the ball is. We've seen that throughout this game, and uh, they've done a good job today limiting Cartersville on the offensive side of the ball. Under eight minutes to go now, third quarter. There's Narramore's numbers on the season. An impressive six quarterback sacks during the year. Third and five from the six yard line for Cartersville. Miles rolls right, fires, has a man, touchdown, McAfee. Nice pass by Miles to McAfee. But there is a flag on the play. And it looks like it's coming back, Dave. Well, those penalties will kill you. There you see the frustration on the Cartersville head coach, Frank Barton. Now we'll wait and see what the penalty is for. Well, that's really going to hurt Cartersville. We'll see how, how many yards it's going to set them back because they had great field position. Got holding on the offense. We're a repeat third down with a 10-yard penalty. You get a 10-yard penalty, and it's third down. Here's the, here's the replay. Miles takes the snap, rolls out to his right. There's your hold right there. Yep, spots his receiver. He was wide open there in the corner of the end zone. Laid it in there perfectly. Nice catch, but it will not go for six. It's going to back him up to the 22 and put him at third down. So two holding penalties. The Canes move 15 yards forward, then 10 yards back. So they're back to the 22-yard line on a third and 20. Miles in trouble. Gets out of it. 25. Looks downfield. Fires. Has a man incomplete. Intended for Kenny Brown. So early county holds, but yet there's another flag on the field. Tell you what, though, for Miles, though, that was a big-time play. If we can see the highlight here, he just avoided two defenders and then calmly threw a nice, what was a nice pass. Brown just not able to haul it in. There you see the snap. Now watch the two white jerseys come right at him. Look at that sidestep right there, right between both of them. Gets away from Narimore on the tackle. He's going to run up about seven, eight yards, and right before he gets hit, releases it. 
and what was a nice pass, but again, Brown just not able to make the catch. Threw it a little bit too high. He got away from Narmore and Falcom, and then overthrew Brown. We have an illegal forward pass against the offense. Penalty to decline. Fourth down. I think it ran a little bit too far ahead. Past the line of scrimmage. Yeah, threw the ball past the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Going to bring out a penalty. It looked uh, looked like a nice play, though. So this will bring Lamberti back out on the field for the Canes. They're spotting the, the mark at the 29, so this will be a 39-yard attempt by Jesus Lamberti. There's the snap, the hold, the kick is up and wide left. So Lamberti wide left, and the Canes come up with no points on this drive. Well, penalties really hurting Cartersville on this possession. You remember the feeling of the, of the punt. They had the nice run back. They had a couple of nice runs. Miles actually had the touchdown in the corner. That was negated by a penalty. It's got to be frustrating along that Purple Hurricane uh, Purple Hurricane sideline right now because basically they had six points and uh, were not able to convert three penalties on the drive two of them accepted and that tells the story of why they've still got nine points on the scoreboard so first and ten for early county and the handoff up the middle and it's Brian Caesar and Caesar picks up about a yard Caesar right now has to be playing with a lot of confidence after that long touchdown run it put his team up 14 9 expect to see him Gets uh, get quite a few handoffs. Caesar and Williams with their touchdown runs, 109 yards combined. All their other plays, which total 27 or 145, so that tells you how much those two guys mean to their running game. So it'll be second down for the Bobcats. Second and nine from their 20, 21-yard line. Joe Harvin, the quarterback, and the handoff to Anthony Beecham. It was a loose football there. It may have been caused by the field, but 54 jumped on it anyway just to be just to be safe. So it'll be third down and four as Beecham picks up about five on the play. Third and four for the Bobcats. They lead it 14-9 over the Canes. We're coming up on six minutes remaining in the third quarter. And there you see the third down conversions of Early County, two of six today. Here's the handoff. This is Williams, and Williams breaks free. And finally brought down by Kenny Brown. Good play by Williams. It is. Early County has done a good job mixing it up with their backs coming out of the backfield because you got Caesar, who's kind of, like I said, in the middle. He's got some speed. You've got uh, Williams right here, as you see, probably the quickest of the three. And then you've got the power back, the fullback in Zane Riley. But Williams is just so dangerous when he gets that ball because any little hole, and he can zip right through it. He almost did it again that time. So the 20-yard gain by Williams gives Early County a first and 10 at the 46-yard line. There you see the numbers on Williams for today. And boy, I tell you what, he's got a lot in the second half to go yet. Here we go, handoff up the middle. And that's Davian George, the senior. So Williams racking up the yards. Again, all he needs is the slightest little opening. And he's going to pick up a lot of extra yardage just because of that speed. Now a second and seven for Early County on their own 48-yard line. Second and seven for the Bobcats. Joel Harbin, your quarterback for Early County. And the pitch to Williams. And Williams breaks free again and gets down to near the 35-yard line. Another great run by Williams, stopped by Shannon Winters. Well, Jim, again, starting to sound like a broken record, but there's the pitch to Williams again. Look at him looking upfield. Finds the opening, finds the hole, cups that ball, and is able to pick up uh, you know, a good chunk of yardage there. Here's another look at it from field level. And he just avoids those purple jerseys until he can't anymore. And he's uh, he's put them in good field position right now with the ball over 34. 
First and ten for the Bobcats. Here's Harvin. And the handoff, and we have a whistle and a flag on the play. This could go against Early County. And it does. And Cartersville had their share of penalties on their last possession, which prevented them from putting some points on the board. Ball start against the offense. Five yard penalty remain first down. So they'll mark it back five yards, but it remains first down for Early County. Some happy fans from Early County. Just glad to be here to root for the Bobcats. So first and 15 for the Bobcats. Harvin drops back, looks downfield, has a man. And that's Bernard George, touchdown. Going to place that ball any nicer. And George with the reception. Nobody in front of him. Clear shot to the end zone. Harvin placed that ball perfectly. There you see the pass. Beautiful spiral, beautiful catch. And George never broke stride. Never at all. Just about a 12-yard run after he made the reception. And early county, Jim, right now. Up 20 to 9. Cartersville's got to be a little nervous at this point. This is Cole Freeman on to attempt the extra point. And it's blocked by the Caves. And that could be big later on. Landis Lauderdale knocked it down. There you see Harvin taking some oxygen. His 39 yard touchdown pass is the difference in this one as Early County goes up by 11 now over the Caves. Well, they've done a good job. The penalty really didn't hurt them that much. It was only five yards. It, it remained first down, and Harvin, Harvin decided to go to the air this time. They've used their backs quite a bit. Let's use the receivers a little bit. He got one wide open out in the flat and just laid it right in there. Beautiful catch over the outstretched arms of the purple jersey, and George makes the catch and just kind of trots into the end zone. Perfect three-step three step, uh, drop there, and... Beautiful pass. So it's early county 20, Cartersville 9. Just over four minutes to go, third quarter. Cole Freeman will kick it off for the Bobcats. That scoring drive, Dave, five plays, 80 yards, and they shoot up three minutes on the play. Well, they do, and you know, sooner or later at this point, if you're early county, it's going to come down to ball control because the one way that you can ensure yourself a victory here is to not let Cartersville offensive unit get on the field. Antoine Sands and McCaffrey are back deep, but it's fielded by Kenny Brown. And Cartersville will take over. Lee Miles has got his work cut out for him on the other side for the Purple Hurricanes. Down 20 to 9, starting to get late in the third quarter. So you're Cartersville, and you're calling the play, so what are they going to do now? Well, there you see Bernard George had the one catch, 34 yards in the touchdown reception. He's having a pretty good day today. Miles with the handoff, and that's Chris Callahan. Callahan. Finally knocked out of bounds. Good run by Chris Callahan, stopped by Bernard George, number 21, the junior. Well, you asked me about Lee Miles, and you really can't go wrong keeping it on the ground or going through the air. We talked about him throughout the broadcast, but as a senior, he's going to have to get out there and lead this team. He passed a, a rush for over 1,400 yards and passed for almost 800 yards. So, you know, he's proven that with Cartersville offensive unit he's got out there, he can get it done either way. Now it's just a matter of getting out there and doing it. First and 10 for the Canes on their own 44. And a handoff fumble on the exchange. A lot of white jerseys there. Evans got the handoff, but then recovered his own fumble. But there is a flag on the play. And here's the replay and the exchange to Evans. And Wait. a little face mask there. That looked like the penalty right there. Face mask on early county. Well, he never had his hands on the ball on the handoff from Miles. Got a five-yard face mask against defense. Well, 
That'll move Cartersville right at midfield, right at 50-yard line. I believe that was Quentin Duncan that uh, grabbed the face mask of Evans. So it's first and five at the 49 for the Cage. Fake handoff, Miles on the keeper, ro runs right side, picks up about four yards, stopped by Joe, uh, Joe Edison. We well, could have run the option, but by the time he got over towards the sideline, he had number three, Callahan, there to his right. But Callahan kind of ran out of room, so Miles, with a wise decision, just keeps it himself. And he's just short of the first down. Edison came in the game when uh, Jason Scott went out with that injury. Of course, Scott's out for the game. Here's Lee Miles' numbers today. 18 rushing yards, 118 yards in the air. Handoff to number 20, Antoine Sams. And he's gang tackled by a number of Bobcats. Should be enough for the first down, though. They will. They're going to move the chains. They'll spot it right at the 45 inside Early County Territory. So first and 10 for the Hurricanes. They're at the 45-yard line, as you said, of Early County. Here's Miles. At quarterback and the handoff to Callahan. Here's Callahan. Gets to near the 40 yard line. Stopped by Quentin Duncan and number 42, Ronando Wimbush. Nice pickup of five yards there for Callahan. They'll spot it right there at the 40. And Cartersville's doing, you know, basically what they need to do at this point. They need yardage. They've got to get down into the red zone and try to put some points on the scoreboard because Early County with its running and its passing by Harvin has proven with 20 points on the board that, that they uh, they can handle the challenge from the Purple Hurricane defense. Second and five, Miles hands off to Evans and stopped again by big number 75. That's Leonard Levat. He was right there at the line to meet that purple jersey. There you see Leonard. See some early county fans. A time gym starts to become a factor in this game as you see the clock on the screen there at 128 to go. Cartersville's got to make something happen. Big third and five play. Here's Miles. Man in motion and the handoff to Evans. And he powers his way up the middle. Met by a number of Bobcats, including number 41, Octavius Balkum. So they spot this one at the 36, Dave. So it'll be about a yard short. So you're the Canes and you're down by 11 points. Do you go for it? Well, that's what Miles just came over to talk to the head coach, Frank Harden, about. It's a big decision at this late juncture of the, qu of the uh, quarter, 42 seconds remaining. We got a timeout call. And they want to make sure they're going to make the right decision, make sure that all 11 kids out there know exactly what the play is, because if you don't get it, Early County's going to run out the clock here in the third quarter. Yeah, this turns out to be one of the bigger plays in the ball game right here. So you, you're looking on a um, cane sticking on the ground, or you think they might sneak it over to maybe a tight end over the middle or something? I don't know, with this juncture, the way Miles has been able to run the ball, I wouldn't be surprised if they just run the keeper, let Miles try to go and pick up the yard. I don't think they're going to run it up the middle. They're going to look to get it out not too far out of one of the corners. But like you said, it's, it's a big play, maybe one of the biggest for Cartersville so far in the game. Because with that defensive line anchored by Leonard Levette, Marcus Worlds and big number 82, Kevin Naramore. Got to take advantage of your opportunities when they're out there. The white jerseys have done a pretty good job plugging up the holes today up front. So on fourth and one, two tight ends are in for the Canes. And we have a flag, and this one could come back. The tight end, Andre Fluellen, big number 99, looked like he jumped. 
And if he did, it's going to be a fourth and six. All start. Yes, our offense. We're laying fourth down. There's the big number 99, the bottom of your screen, jumping off sides. And now a fourth and six, Dave. Well, now you got to go to the air. Although, the way Miles is able to run the ball, you can't say that definitively. He's very elusive. Evans, Evans is the lone setback in the backfield. Here's Miles on fourth and six. Rolls outside, in trouble, and finally brought down by big number 82, Naramore. Kevin Naramore, the senior, comes up with a big play for the Bobcats. Well, they had six guys up on the line. We've talked about Naramore a couple of times already today. It looked like he was going to go ahead and attempt to throw the football because, well, you can just tell by looking at the replay, but a couple of white jerseys snuck through the offensive line, and Naramore just lowers the helmet, lowers the shoulder, and just... Gets the hit in there. That's his eighth quarterback sack this season. And again, that's what you want to see out of your senior lineman, and that's what Naramore's done for this team this year. Big number 55, Marcus Worlds. I'll tell you what, he made a play, too, on that defense, chasing uh, Miles out of the pocket. So it's first and 10, and here comes Caesar again. As the Bobcats take control. And all three of their backs have run really well today. Caesar, of course, had their last touchdown at 30, uh, the 58-yard uh, the run. Big plays today by Caesar Williams and, of course, the reception by George. But Caesar had the 58-yard touchdown run. Williams, the fastest of the crew, 51-yard touchdown run, their first touchdown of the day. So they've had one on the ground and two by air for Early County's Bobcats. Second and seven for Early County, and now we have a stop and play. And that marks the end of the third quarter. Bobcat to high school football state championships on GPTV. Back here at the Georgia Dome, Jim Janocchio, Dave Cohn with the double A semifinal. Early County leads it 20 to 9 over Cartersville as we start the fourth quarter of action here under the big top. Well, Jim, a lot of credit's got to go to the white jerseys, that early county defense. They've done a great job today just stifling Cartersville's offense. We knew coming into this game, Cartersville was averaging 37 points a game, allowing just 11. And look at your scoreboard. Second and seven for the Bobcats and a handoff to Collier Watson. Watson picks up a few, stopped by number two, Kenny Brown of Cartersville. Early County doing a nice job mixing it up as to who's coming out of the backfield. We have seen Caesar, we've seen George, we've seen Riley, we've seen Williams, and now we see Collier Watson. Collier Watson plays a little quarterback throughout the year as well. Yes, he does. He's the backup to Harvin. And you got a senior backing up a sophomore. Interesting. Usually it's uh, the other way around. Yeah, a lot of good experience for Early County, which is part of the reason why they're here at the Georgia Dome. Third and one, and up the middle is Zane Riley, and it looks like Riley might have that first down. Let's go downstairs to Anthony White. Anthony? Okay, well, guys, you talk about Early County and their crowd. They sold out 1,500 tickets in four hours and have 12 busloads of people down here. And they estimate there's about at least 100 people left in the town. So you know there's no Christmas shopping going on there because everyone's here. <laughs> it's tough to be a business owner down yeah, in Early County Yeah, it would be today. tough. Yeah, it would be tough. Like we said, ice, snow, and high school football playoffs. That's it. It's the only thing that shuts it down. First and 10, and the handoff goes to Caesar. Brian getting a lot of work today. Well, for Early County, your head coach, the idea right now is ball control. Let's run as much of that clock as we can. They've got a 20 to 9 lead. He's got backs here that he can use. He's got a quarterback in Joel Harvin who's thrown some nice passes today. Let's just hold on to the football. The surest way to not give up any points is to keep Cartersville's offense off the field. That's what Trey Wolf is thinking, ball control right now. A little over 10 minutes to hold it, and that's it. it. Busting loose. This is Williams, and he's gone. Touchdown, Xavier Williams. 
Fastest guy on the field here this afternoon. His second touchdown, his first one from 51 yards out. We'll check the yardage on this one. But again, as we, we, we'll see the replay here in just a second, he also does a great job getting away from a purple jersey and what we would consider to be a short tackle. There he is, takes the handle. Look at that. He's almost down. He's able to maintain his balance with his left hand, and he's off to the races for the second time this afternoon. Xavier Williams with a 32-yard touchdown run. Cole Freeman on to attempt the extra point, and the kick is good. And Early County has taken a 27-9 lead. And there's Xavier Williams' 32-yard touchdown run, his second of the day. Well, he's played an outstanding game today. Again, he came awfully close to getting tackled. Good job, though, with his left hand to maintain his balance. We'll see it again from a different angle. Takes the handoff from Harvard. Look at him. He gets hit right away. Almost goes down. He's able to spin. And as he spins, he splits the defensive backs that were coming at him. He's just so quick they had no chance. And he's in the end zone before you can blink your eyes. And he's got another touchdown. This one from 32 yards out to go along with a 51-yard run earlier. Eight carries today, 144 yards, an average of 18 yards a carry, which is just spectacular. And, of course, two touchdowns. And it looks as though Early County might be on their way to the championship game. And if they head to the championship game, they'll play the winner of tomorrow's double-A game between Americus and Cook. And of course, Americus, the defending champs. Kind of quiet below us right now, Jim. That's where the huge contingent of Cartersville people have come down. Of course, the Early County people are just loving it in the Dome today. But Cartersville's just not been able to get in gear as much as they normally do in this game today. Cole Freeman to kick off. Callahan and Sam's back deep for Cartersville. And the kick was taken by Jason Ritchie. And the Canes will take over first and ten. So Coach Wolf's got everything working right on the sideline. Mason back and forth. He's got a 27-9 lead. He's in the fourth quarter. Ten and a half to go. And now it's up to the Early County defenders to contain Lee Miles. You know, I never like to compare a high school kid to a collegiate or a pro, but the way Miles is able to operate is a little reminiscent if you remember watching Michael Vick as a collegiate That's right. player. Yep. In that, if nothing's open through the air, he's great running the ball. He's bad. Here's Miles drop back to pass, and the ball is batted down by an early county player, and it was number 51, Jermaine Mells knocked it down. Good play by Jermaine. I didn't say that just because they both wear number seven. <laughs> it just happens to be that Miles wears number seven. There he is. Of course, Vic, the, uh, the lefty, and Miles throws right-handed. Second and 10 at the 34. Bad snap, Miles recovers, rolls right, pressure. Now he looks to scoop the other way, and Miles is in trouble, and down he goes. Bobcats were all over him on that play. And see, he's only got so much time to slice and dice. If he looks upfield as he did that time after rolling out, and he's got nothing downfield, well, first of all, he does a good job with a bad snap, and then he rolls to his right. He's got nobody downfield. All of a sudden, all he sees is these huge white jerseys coming at him. And there's just nothing there. They take a huge loss of that one. That's going to knock him all the way back to, looks like, about the 28-yard line. So Jermaine Mills comes up with a great defensive play. And now it's uh, third and 16 for the Canes. Here's Miles. Looks long, has a man, and it's incomplete. Flag on the play. Flag on the play. Could be pass interference. Pass intended for Kenny Brown, broken up by Sean Harris. And we talked about turnovers at halftime and early in the third quarter. What happens here, and we'll look at the, this replay again, but what happens here is trailing 27-9, to they're going to force to score quickly, and they're not going to be able to do that running the football. So look for Miles now to start throwing the ball downfield a little bit more often. Here's the replay, low angle. 
Look at that. There's big number. We got defensive pass interference against the white. Automatic first time. From our vantage point, some of the pressure on the quarterback there, number 40, Zane Riley. Miles really had just nowhere to go. Ends up getting a nice pass off. But. So it'll be first and 10 for Cartersville at their 44-yard line. Miles checking off with his teammates and then hands off the ball to Devin Evans. And Evans has stopped cold. It's going to be tough running into the big defensive line of Early County. Jim, because what happens is as this game goes on, realizing that they're up 27 to 9 and about the nine minute mark to go in the fourth quarter. Everybody, this is when you get your second win, you get that boost of adrenaline. And I think we're seeing that right now. On second and nine, Miles back to pass again. Now on the keeper and crosses over midfield and finally brought down by number 55, Marcus Worlds. Well, you see in the replay, too, number 66, the senior Walter Somerset came in and make a, made a nice hit there on Miles. Here it is again as Miles keeps it, crosses over midfield, and then takes a couple of shots right there. So third and two for the Caves at the 48 of Early County. There you see the numbers on Miles. Over the middle he goes, and it's tipped and intercepted by Williams. Look at Williams go, 45, 40, near the 40-yard line, a great return by Xavier Williams. Well, we just talked about it. Trailing here in the fourth quarter, Miles doesn't really have the luxury of trying to run clock and keep it himself. He's got to put the ball in the air. He throws downfield. Here's the replay. And the ball is tipped. And when that happens, there's Williams right there. That's an easy catch for Williams. And then with his speed, he's able to break it out to the right side of the field. And Early County sitting pretty here with just over eight minutes remaining. Pass intended for Jason Ritchie right off his fingertips. And here's Early County with the ball. And now it's definitely ball control as Caesar has it. Across the 35 to the 33-yard line. Good pickup by Caesar. Caesar kind of tripped up a little bit, I think. Nobody helped him out. He just kind of tripped on his own. Otherwise, he would have had some more yards. Very impressed with the running backs and fullbacks of Early County. There's so much of the publicity coming into this game focused in on Cartersville and on Lee Miles and everything that they've been able to accomplish. Early County's Backfield players have been very, very impressive today. On second and two, and the handoff to Zane Riley. And Riley takes it across the 20 yard line. The Bobcats are looking good. They really are just keeping it on the ground. They go from Caesar to Riley. Here's another look at that. Number 40, big number 40, the fullback gonna get that, avoids a couple of tacklers. Runs into two Cartersville defenders. They pick up the first down, and once again, that ball spotted just inside the 20-yard line. Let's go downstairs to Anthony White. Anthony. Well, guys, you talk in terms of these, this trio of running backs between Riley, Williams, and Caesar. These guys are used to the big game. They rushed for over 3,000 yards this year, so they're sitting pretty right now. You betcha. Now that ball control is going to be paying off for Early County as the clock winds down. That's Collier Watson with the ball. So the clock continues to run. 6.55. And counting. Collier Watson with Riley season. Williams just happy to get a touch now with that. He's had a couple here in the second half of the football game. Again, he plays a little bit of backup quarterback. Second and 14. At the 23 for Early County, and they're looking to have that clock run down as far as they go before they start that play, and it goes to Zane Riley. Riley picks up a couple. 
We talked about it. Ball control. Keep the clock moving. Let's just pound it into the defensive line as Cartersville. Cartersville's defensive line has been out there quite a bit in this game today, first and second half. Probably starting to wear down just a little bit. Third and 12 now, Dave, for the Bobcats. And the handoff on the end around of Collier Watson. And Watson gets maybe back to the 20-yard line. Jim, that could have been an interesting play. Quarterback handing off to your backup quarterback. You say Watson's fade back. You need your 12 yards. Let Watson put it in the air. There's a guy that can throw the football. But truthfully, at this point, they just want to keep the clock running and keep it on the ground. Just a reminder, today's game can also be watched live on the GPTV Intersite, Internet site at www.gpb.org. Just follow the links to connect to the game. And beginning Tuesday, you'll be able to watch the game again on the same site. Once again, that's Internet site, www.gpb.org. It's easy to find. I'll tell you what, uh, technology has changed, huh? We've got time out on the field. Dave, I'll tell you what, when we first started doing these games in 97, no talk about internet. No such thing as internet sites and dot orgs and dot nets. It tells you how the uh, the whole media business has changed and how far it has come. And that we're broadcasting live on television, but we can have folks anywhere in the globe watching these games when they're available up there next week and available right now. There you see early county, that starting backfield today that we were talking about earlier. Look at those numbers. Caesar and Williams, both 144 yards today. Riley coming in, pick up 40 yards. And as Anthony mentioned a little bit before, this is not anything new with this uh, with this trio here. And they don't even have, uh, well, they do have Williams down there for the 144. I was going to say, Riley right now is getting some carries. He just doesn't pick up as many yards. Doesn't have the same speed as the other two, but he's just kind of one of those pounding backs. There's your star of the game, Xavier Williams. What a game he's had. A couple of touchdowns. He had a run of 51 yards make that 53 yards it gave early county a 7-6 lead early on and just had a 32 yard run not too long ago and off to caesar he runs around left side 20 15 and out of bounds around the 12 yard line so it looks like the senior brian caesar might be playing one more game well early county has gone up far and above their season average number of yards per game, which is, you see there, 232.6. Today, 348 yards rushing. And it's been four guys that have been getting it done, and Caesar, Riley, Williams, and Collier Watson, although Watson's only carried a couple of times. So Cartersville will take over on downs. It's first and 10 from their own 15-yard line. I expect to put him up in the air at this point. Oh. I would uh, have to agree with you. There's the completion to Kendale McAfee. McAfee tries to make something happen, a little shake and bake, and gets to around the 20-yard line. Haven't really called his name that much, but he was the one that got things started early in the ball game back in the first quarter with that touchdown reception. And a big one it was, 73-yard touchdown reception to open the scoring. Coming up to 3A semifinal, North Forsyth and LaGrange, the Raiders and the Rangers. And then later on at Statesboro and Troop at 6 p.m. before a game. And tonight, Valdosta and Parkview. It goes upstairs, and Early County comes up with another big turnover. John Harris on the return. Good play by Harris. Well, turnovers starting to tell the story of this game, or they are they are telling the story of this game because, again, Miles having to go to the air. Each of the last two possessions has been picked off. This one was going for Sam's, Dave. Yep. And there's the pick by Sean Harris. So with just four minutes remaining, Early County, all they've got to do is Everybody keep it on the ground. 
on the ball fence, penalty to decline, ball goes over. So they decline the penalty and take over, does Early County. And they'll have it first and 10 on the 10, so that'll be first and goal for the Bobcats. Not only do you get the interception, but you end up with great field position at the 10-yard line. So they're already up 27-9, looking to put some more points on the board, maybe. And run that clock, that's for sure. And the handoff goes to Caesar, and he gets it down to the eight. Two-yard pickup by Brian Caesar. Under four minutes to go. Well, they'll just keep handing it off to the various backs, as we've seen throughout most of the game. They'll just keep pounding it into the big purple defensive line. Cartersville offense tells, tells the story today, Jim. Penalties have hurt. Four turnovers have hurt. Back-to-back -back interceptions here in the final quarter. Locked field goal. Here are the Bobcats on second and eight at the eight-yard line, and we have a flag before they get this play underway. And the officials talk it over. Here's the call. So it gets against the Bobcats. That an offside penalty. Got a false start. Oh, it's false offense. Start. Remain second down. So at this juncture, a penalty that really doesn't hurt him that much. They can just keep chewing off the time on the clock there. Second and 13. And Harvin to Watson. Collier Watson takes it down to about the 12-yard line. Stopped by Orlandis Lauderdale, big number 95. Well, with only three minutes to go, you can get Xavier Williams and Caesar out of the game if you like. I think Williams is probably done for the day. You start giving Collier Watson, one of your other seniors, some quick touches, and, th and that's what uh, Coach Wolf is doing. Let's get everybody involved. They're going to have, you know, a few couple more games to play, possibly. You want to keep everybody rested and uh, rested up and healthy. So the clock continues to run. Two and a half minutes to go now. And the officials stop it. And a timeout by Early County. And the Bobcats want to keep the clock running. Why are they calling timeout here? Well, not really sure. Just probably want to go ahead and make well, sure. Delay a game. Oh, delay offense. a game penalty. Remain third down. I see some of the players signaling for a timeout. Timeout. Again, at this point, you want to keep everybody organized. You want to make sure everybody's on the same page. You've got a nice lead, 27 to 9. Not enough time, really, for Cartersville to put that many points on the board. But you just don't. You still. You still want to keep things organized. And there's your. Uh, there's your matchup in Burley County. Looks like they're going to win this one. They will play the winner of tomorrow's double-A semifinal here at the Georgia Dome between Americus and Cook, and of course, uh, Americus, the defending double-A champions. Early County's only lost this season? To Americus. By two points. That's right. So, depending on what happens, we could be looking at an outstanding game tomorrow. But that is, of course, depending upon what happens. Big crowd filing in, as they have all day long here at the Dome. Yeah! Don't forget, you can become a Georgia Public Television member today just by visiting our website at www.gpb.org. It's totally secure, simple to use, and takes just two minutes of your time. That's www.gpb.org. Brian Caesar on the carry for the Bobcats. As we come up on the two minute warning earlier today, of course the final score in the single A semifinal, the Wolves victorious over Clinch County.
15 to 7. So Dexter Wood takes his uh, team to the championship for the second straight year. Of course, last year they lost to Commerce. He had a lot of success at Marietta, didn't he? Dexter Wood, yeah, yep. sure did. He's quite a coach, though. Fourth and 21 for the Bob Castle. Go for it. Just eat some more time. This is Harvin over the middle, and intercepted. it's intercepted by Kenny Brown. And Brown, on the return, gets it to about the 33-yard line for the Canes. Good play by Kenny Brown. Second interception for him, I think, this afternoon. A little surprised that Early County decided to go to the air. Why not keep it on the ground, keep the clock running? You've only got a minute 27 to go. Why risk the turnover? But they do. And So we mentioned uh, Buford winning the single-A semifinal. So they'll play the winner of tomorrow's single-A semifinal between Bowden and Metter. And both those teams come in at 9-4. and four. Here's a replay, Dave. Harvin back to throw. Spots his receiver, but by the time he releases it, there's no white jerseys there. Everybody in purple. Here's Miles. Miles is going to look to throw this one about four miles. No, instead he keeps it. Here goes Miles. Over the 50 to the 40. Big pickup by Miles. He's out down to the 25-yard line and finally knocked out of bounds at the 24-yard line. Knocked out of bounds by number 29, Sean Harris. So Miles comes up with a big run. And that's his game right there. He just was not able to do enough of that throughout the game this afternoon to keep Cartersville, to keep their offense moving downfield. Too many times he had nobody downfield, did not have the room to run. And by the time he was able to, uh, to look upfield, he had you know two and three white jerseys in his face. But that particular run that we just saw is vintage Lee Miles. That's what the Cartersville fans have been watching now for the last few years. Pick up a 44 by Miles. First and 10 at the 24. Here's Miles drop the pass. Drops back the pass and incomplete. Intended for Kenny Brown. 104 to play in the final quarter. That pretty much says it right there, huh? Been a long day for the Purple Hurricanes. I'm sure not at all what they expected coming into the Dome. After a season of 12 and 1. There's the uh, numbers on Miles today. An impressive day on both sides of the ball, including five sacks. Here's, here's Miles over the middle and completes the pass to Chris Callahan. Nice reception there by Callahan, the junior. He'll spot it at the 20, right about the 25 yard line. So on third and 10, just under a minute to play, it's Miles. Looks downfield again. Cannot find a receiver. Escapes some tacklers and gets back to the 20-yard line. So he picked up about five after fading back. Interesting time for this Cartersville team, because as we said, in the open, 16 seniors who are playing their last game today. So fourth and six for the Canes. Here's Miles. Swing pass to Evans, and Evans gets down to near the uh, five-yard line, brought down by number 35. Nice to see Cartersville still battling, though. They trail 27-9, but from watching this set of plays, you would never know that they were trailing the game. They're still fighting and scratching to get down to the end zone. Coach Bard not giving up at all. He wants his team to score one more time before they get out of here. First and goal at the five. Miles on the keeper, straight up the middle. Touchdown for Miles.
Five yard touchdown run by Miles. And it's 27 15 early county with four seconds left to play. And Jesus Lamberti will come in to attempt the extra point. And as you said, Coach Harden wants to go out on a positive note, as positive a note as possible. And the only way they can do that, knowing that you're going to lose the game, is to keep battling towards the end zone and closing your out through season with a touchdown. And Lamberti's kick is up, and it's good. So it's early county, 27, Cartersville 16. We'll be back with more after this.